Okay, so guys, I uh, have set up for you right now. You can see I've already tested some of it out here. It was uh, actually the first video I started shooting, but my camera decided that it wasn't going to keep rolling, so I had to change some things around, and now we're going to give it a take two. So we have a live fire, uh, emergency fire starting uh, original kit there. It is this kind of stuff right here. We have the zombie tinder uh, jellied gin cotton, which we're going to take some of that out so you can see that too. And that is that stuff right there. And, and then we have the zombie tinder zombie tinder carry light kit, which has these nifty little Zombie looking head candle things. Set that right there. And we'll get some of these in the frame here so you guys can see them. And while I close this back up, then the last thing that we have is a UST wet tender fire starter. Uh, wet, oh, wet fire, sorry. Wet fire fire starter. And the odd thing about this is it kind of looks like a salt cube. And it shaves off very similar to, uh, what do you call it, wax. But it be behaves nothing like wax when it's on fire. It's pretty neat, actually. So we're going to just shave some of this off here. And then keep that in a nice little pile there. Wipe that off. Of this guy back in here, and then uh, I do have from the pocket bellows kit from last month's battle box the fire steel. I was going to use the uh, flint and steel in from here, but <laughs> I need a little bit more practice on that, not too good with it. And then in the back here, I don't know how well you guys can see it, I'll move these out of the way actually. That is a Walmart waterproof case. We're going to see how well the match is light in there after being submerged in there. It's been in there for probably about 10 minutes now at least. So anyway, let's get on to lighting this stuff. So we'll move this out of the way. We'll move this over to here. And then we will start off with the wet fire. And instead of using the steel on here, because the steel I found that's on here is not all that great, I'm going to just use my knife. There we go. And just like that, lit pretty easily. So we're just going to let that burn, and while that's doing that, we're going to bring over, we're actually going to let that kind of get together to itself there and burn off. But as you can see, it doesn't really behave like wax would, where it would melt out and spread out. Instead, it's, it's doing quite the opposite, and it's kind of getting crispy and crunching in on itself as it burns. But it was very easy to start. I had no problem starting it. It was uh, fairly simple to set up. And once I got a nice little pile of magnesium there, it started right up, no problem. As you can see, it's already starting to die out. But it still is giving off quite a bit amount of heat. You can still get something started with that. Now that that's out, now we're going to go to the live fire, and that is this neat little stuff right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull it apart a little bit, get some fibers going, I'm going to set it down right in the same spot.
It's not lighting as easy as the other one. There it goes. Now all those other little magnesium pieces are starting to light. Now this is a, it's a very oily product I have found because when I first took it out of the case and cut it with my knife, my knife was completely covered in this very oily flammable residue which burned right off but uh, it definitely <laughs> has a lot of flammable material on it and I would highly recommend using it. It puts out a lot of heat and it burns for a really good amount of time. Before when my camera was rolling previously this was burning probably a good percentage of the time of filming before before my camera decided to just cut out and it's it kept going it kept going almost as long as the uh, little zombie tinder candle type deal here as you can see in the back let me see if I can bring that into frame and this this right here pretty much acts just like a candle it burns for quite a while so we're just gonna light this with a regular match I'll keep that right over there, so. You know what? Let's see if we can... Uh, there we go. Oh. Let's see if we can just light it with this. That's how I lit the last one, so... Should be the same. There we go. And that's going. And then once this burns out... We will move on to the jellied ginned cotton tin, or jelly ginned cotton. I should say the tin is what it came in. So, just waiting for that little guy to burn out. And you can see it got a pretty strong wind here, and these things are still staying fairly decently lit. So, they're definitely a good product to be using in adverse weather if they're staying with the amount of wind that I'm dealing with right now. Now that that's almost out, we're going to set this right over here. And we're going to try lighting it with just the flint and tinder, or the flint and knife. Just like that. Real easy, started right up, no problem. I definitely like that stuff. That stuff works real well. You can see it burns real good, real hot. Camera's having a little bit of problem staying focused on it. And we got some of these matches over here. We'll just put them right on top. So a nice little matchstick fire going. That's burning that real good. You can see that the the candle is still going pretty well. I mean, I call it a candle. It's not obviously a candle. It has a, uh, pretty sure, a tinder-type core. It says it can be lit with a spark. It's 100% waterproof. All-weather fire. Never expires. And creates char. So, when it gets done... Oh, I see it now. Because I lit one of these before, and it creates this little piece of a char cloth here. So that's pretty cool. Inside there is uh, like a cotton ball or something. We'll find out when it's done. Which won't be too long from now. But that's pretty neat. That's definitely uh, like a reusable source there. Creating a, uh, a char cloth for you. So as you can see now, the cotton is out so we'll get that tin out of the way and we'll bring this into view just rotate the camera a little bit get these out of the way and we'll just keep it submerged for a little bit now this is a Walmart brand waterproof case for matches it has a little piece of flint in the bottom here 
I'll take it out and show you guys. The only reason why I'm a little worried about whether or not this will actually work is because the seal here was crimped. There's a crimp spot in the seal, and the seal isn't a stationary seal, it actually comes off. So, now here's the moment of truth on this. Rotate the camera back over this way. Let's see if there's any water in here. Nope, looks like it kept them dry. But we won't know for sure until we take one of them out and try lighting it. I just got another box of matches here. I'm just going to try lighting it off of that. And it lights right up. So these are pretty much standard matches. There's nothing fancy about them. They're pretty much just standard matches that I shoved in here because the case comes empty. And I think I only paid about $2 for just the case with the piece of flint on the bottom. So I would say that's definitely a win for, you know, waterproof case of that size. So, now we're just waiting on that. And while we're waiting on that, I actually just remembered that in the weatherproof fire starting pocket bellows kit, there's some wet tinder in there. So we're going to give that a try. As you can see, I'm keeping that in frame for you guys. And the... <laughs> In this pocket bellows, it's called the Baddest Bee Fire Fuses. It's got this little picture, really like a yellow jacket with a match. Nice little waterproof case that it's in. So we're going to crack this sucker open. Wow, those are really packed in there. Definitely want you to get the most bang for your buck, I guess. Let's see if I can get one out. Hopefully. I have to take the other end off. There we go. So, ease of retrieval is not that great. Can't just take off one cap and take it out. So we'll set that off to the side. And I know you're usually supposed to take these and flare them out a little bit. So it kind of acts like a wick. Let's give that a try. Again, we're going to be using the flint that it came with, but we're just not using the steel striker it came with because I don't like it. We're going to be using my knife instead. And let's just get a little bit on there. And that's lit now. It's not going quite as strong as I would hoped. See if we can manipulate it a little bit, get it going a little bit better. There we go, that's not too bad right there. So yeah, that's burning pretty well. As you can see, the zombie tinder in the back there is just about done. It's uh, on the char cloth stage now. And when that gets done, we'll have this nice little ball of uh, char cloth that we can use for later on. So, from my take on it, the use of this is to be more like a candle and start some sticks or dry leaves or whatever with that. And then this way, you can keep that there as a continuous fire source while you're trying to get your fire started. I mean, you could probably still just throw it in a coconut husk or a bunch of straw or something and start it like that. But the, uh, from what I can tell, it's going with the whole renewable fire uh, starting source idea. So you would start the fire with that, and then as it burns, it's creating you your char cloth. So, and as you can see, the little uh, baddest bee fire fuse is going pretty good there. It's giving off quite a bit of heat. So now I paused it, 
so you guys wouldn't have to sit here and watch all the lovely smoldering and dying out of the fire. And shortly, we will have a nice piece of char cloth going on. And we can add that to our zombie tinder pioneer can tin. Because inside here was a nice little package of char cloth. And as you can see, I've already added a little bit in there myself. So that's almost done. Just waiting for a little bit of it to die out. And that looks like it is finally died out. So once that cools, we'll put that in our little baggie of char cloth and we'll be good to go. So in closing guys, I liked all these products, they all worked very well. I have to uh, <laughs> get some more practice in with the steel and the flint because I, I didn't do too well on that. Uh, the zombie tinder, the, the cotton worked real well, the tinder carry light kit worked real well, the live fire worked awesome, and the busy bee uh, fire fuses out of the weatherproof fire starter and bellows kit worked excellently. Uh, I even forgot uh, forgot one over here. A little UST uh, wet fire little cube guy. We'll put that right there in the front. So all this stuff worked real awesome. It was all very easy to light. I highly recommend any one of these products to anybody that's uh, looking for any kind of an easy to start fire uh, tinder. All these work great. The uh, little match container there worked really well just for being a, a no-name brand Walmart match container worked great uh, anyway guys if you have any questions about any of this stuff leave a comment below remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys for the next video